Today we are going to go over all the tips you will need to help you in your playthrough of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But before we get into today's video, please subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can always unsubscribe later if you would like to. Welcome to Paldea. This brand new region has a whole host of Pokemon and mechanics, which gives players a completely different experience in contrast to any previous Pokemon titles. Whether you've just picked up the game or just want to learn more, this video is going to cover all of the most useful tips to help you get the most out of your adventure in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Once you get into the game, you will want to maybe change a few of the settings in your menu screen. You have the options to speed up your text, of course, like like other titles as well as automatically sending Pokemon to boxes when you have a party of six Pokemon. Like Sword and Shield skip movie feature, skipping cutscenes is an option you can toggle on throughout your playthrough of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But for your first playthrough it's probably worth keeping on to immerse yourself in the whole experience of these new games. Auto saves is an option and will be set to on. Normally with new titles I suggest keeping this feature on due to early version crashes that can occur. It's happened to me twice now, so just be aware. But once you're into the later stages of your game, you may want to turn this off as it will allow you to save in front of shiny Pokemon if you come across them and Terra Rage, which you can reset on and attempt again if anything goes wrong. Now, the first thing that you will be given in game is an option of your starter Pokemon. You will have the choice between Sprigatito, Quaxly and Fiococo. All three are pure grass, water and fire types respectively. Each of these starters will give you a good option going into the these games as there are so many other water grass and fire types as well as many other types available early on in this game to help balance your team with coverage that you'll need it's worth pointing out that the starters you receive right now at the beginning of your game are shiny locked so don't spend any of your time soft resetting for these in their shiny versions if you want to get these as shiny pokemon you can do so by hatching breeding eggs later on in your playthrough now once you get into the first area you will have an abundance of new Pokemon to catch. Pokemon will now appear solely as overworld spawns and you will not get any exclamation marks in game like previous other generations. The Pokemon will be visible and spawn into new areas as you enter them. You will be given a number of Pokeballs after starting your journey with a Pokemon being available shortly after this to help stock up on more. And this will definitely help in this first area get a whole host of brand new Pokemon. Now just to note there are three variations of overworld spawns your regular pokemon shiny pokemon and pokemon with a golden glowing aura shiny pokemon are now visible in the overworld although you have to be really diligent when traveling through areas unlike pokemon legends arceus there is currently no jingle or indication when a shiny pokemon spawns so the only way to notice it is being able to spot it by the color variation and this can be a little tricky especially if the pokemon shiny form is not so obvious Yes, we're looking at you, Gengar and Garchomp. Now the glowing aura Pokemon are the other overworld spawns to look out for, and these Pokemon will be wild terror Pokemon, having access to more rarer terror types than you would usually find on wild Pokemon. These Pokemon can be seen very easily and from a good distance away, so don't worry about missing these ones like shiny Pokemon. Once you enter a battle with a wild terror Pokemon, you will have to wear down its HP to a point before you're able to catch it. Once the terror shield is broken then you'll be able to throw pokeballs and add it to your party i want to mention as well in the early game don't worry about trying to evolve every pokemon you see to help fill your pokedex you will have access to all of the mid and later evolutions of these pokemon later in your playthrough which are really accessible and this might save you some time there are some really nice quality of life changes added to pokemon scholar and violet you are now able to go into the summary screen of a pokemon anywhere you are in the region and use the relay move function. You can also use the nickname function in this same facility. Pokemon centers and Pokemon look like this in the new games as well. They'll be dotted around the region and plenty of them. Here you will also have the TM machine which gives you access to crafting TMs from materials and league points that you acquire throughout your playthrough. TMs can also be found out in the wild as normal so this isn't the only place to pick them up. 
To craft TMs, you are going to need a combination of materials and league points. Materials are items collected from defeating or catching wild Pokemon. Each TM will require a certain amount of materials from a specific Pokemon and a set number of league points. League points can be obtained from defeating Pokemon gyms, wild terror Pokemon, terror raids, and defeating team star bosses. It's worth noting as well that you can pretty much pay for most things in this game with either league points or Pokemon cash, which is quite an nice upgrade from previous generations. Now a really great way to collect Pokemon materials is using the auto battle feature. You get a tutorial on how this works pretty early on in your playthrough but this is an option which is available as soon as you receive your starter Pokemon by using the R button on your controller. This will send your Pokemon out onto the field and it will collect items nearby and auto battle any wild Pokemon that are in your vicinity. By doing this you'll collect experience points for your party. Oh and yeah experience shares actually automatically on and it's not an option you can toggle off in this game. As well as the experience that you'll collect from these auto battles you will also receive the materials from that respected Pokemon that you've defeated which can be used in conjunction with crafting TMs. And in case you're wondering the auto battle command will never knock out a shiny Pokemon. If a shiny Pokemon appears and you mistakenly use this function, your Pokemon will refuse to battle this shiny Mon, so shiny hunters rest at ease. Also, once you reach that first Pokemon center, you will be able to trade Pokemon into your game. This will allow you to trade over other starters if you have two copies of the game and another Switch, or friends to really customize your Pokemon party even more. And one more thing, once you visit a Pokemon Center and heal up or use a Pokemon, it will become a fast travel point. This will allow you to fly back to this location from anywhere else on the map. The next really important thing to know is about items in the wild. You will get Pokeballs that have a red glow to them. These can be anything from potions to revives to more rarer items. The next items to look out for are the yellow glowing Pokeballs, which will be predominantly TMs. And the final thing to look for is the glistening spots. These will spawn in every new area when you enter them and just make sure to pick them up as they will give you rarer items and most of the time more valuable item drops that can be sold or used to help you with your playthrough. It's worth noting that these items don't seem to be a one-off pickup. All of these items will respawn back into these areas after a set amount of time has passed, although the specific items themselves can change from previously spawned or collected items. There are three stores stories in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the Titan Pokemon, Team Star and the League Challenge. Now you can do these in any order and one at a time if you like, but there is no level scaling in these games. I would recommend doing all three in conjunction with each other. This way you will not be too over leveled for some of the challenges and not too under leveled for some of the other ones. The Titans is an important quest to complete and without doing this quest you will not be able to progress with the others as each Titan you beat will unlock a new mode of transport for your ride on legendary Pokemon which helps you get to new areas of the region. Of course this is your journey through Paldea you can do it how you want but I think for some of the later boss fights you will want to make sure that you have a well rounded high level level team otherwise these battles will be extremely difficult. Like in other Pokemon games each gym badge will give you increased chances of catching higher level Pokemon and those Pokemon at a certain level to obey you in battle. It is possible to go out from the very start and catch much higher level Pokemon but the catch rates of these Pokemon will be a lot higher than normal and these Pokemon if caught will not obey you until you have the relevant gym badges. Now another aspect of these games is taking advantage of the classes available once you are enrolled at school. These classes give a lot of valuable information about different aspects of the game including shiny Pokemon and terror raids and by completing classes you will also have another way of earning valuable experience points through experience candies that are rewarded for passing exams. New classes become available with each new gym badge you get. Also make sure that you do speak to the teachers around the school as you will eventually get some side quests to unlock certain Pokemon or rare items as you make your way through your adventure. Picnics are something to take advantage of throughout your journey. You can use these facilities to heal your Pokemon and get access to eggs. Essentially picnics have now become a portable daycare service. As long as you have two compatible Pokemon in your party you will be able to 
to produce eggs which will be randomly appear in the picnic basket. Picnics also have a new feature called sandwich making. You can use sandwiches to increase egg spawning, shiny chances and certain types of Pokemon appearing more often in the wild. So be sure to get familiar with this feature throughout your adventure. You will get given sandwich recipes throughout your playthrough but make a note every time you defeat a new gym leader to visit the sandwich shop in that town or city where you will be given new recipes to try out. Terrastalizing is the new mechanic in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and you will get this new battle facility pretty early on in your playthrough. You can use this mechanic once per battle but be aware you will need to recharge your Terra Orb at Pokemon Center once you have used it out in the wild. Terra Raids are the next new feature to discuss. Terra Raids will look like these glowing crystals around the Paldea region. Each will have a different color that depicts the Terra type of the Pokemon inside of it. To begin with you will have access to one star Terra Raids as you collect more gym badges, the higher star raids will become available until you become the region champion beating the Elite Four and after this you will have access to five star terror raids. The terror raids in game go up to six star terror raids which can be accessed in the post game. Terror raids give you access to rare Pokemon and good item drops. It's worth taking on any of these terror raids as you go around and spot them in the Paldea region. This will help you with your Pokedex, obtain higher level Pokemon, Pokemon and some very useful items. The other feature that appears in Paldea is mass outbreaks. These have made a return from Pokemon Legends Arceus but are slightly different. When you open your map you will sometimes notice either a question mark or a Pokemon sprite in certain areas. These are indications of a mass outbreak. If it is a question mark on your map this is because it is of a Pokemon that you haven't got registered in your Pokedex. When you visit these mass outbreaks these Pokemon will appear more frequently than normal and will keep spawning after being knocked out or caught in high numbers until the outbreak ends. These can go on for a long time and produce hundreds of one specific Pokemon so it's a great way to get materials for TMs and experience points for your team as well as being a great way to shiny hunt early on in your playthrough. So that about covers everything in this guide. I hope you found it useful and have a great time with your playthrough of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. If you have enjoyed this video please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more guides on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and until next time friends thanks for tuning in.